In the last video, we created a uh, custom middleware that returns an error status code if something fails, or maybe we just didn't pass in the right data into it. Uh, but I wanted to just cover custom status codes in route handlers in its own lesson here. So let's go ahead and create a, um, uh, let's create a route. So I'm gonna create a new request. This is to HTTP localhost port 3000. Let's do um, uh, maybe like um, always errors. So like always errors. We got a 404 not found. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we're in routing source routes. Let's create a file called always errors. And in mod, we will mod that. Pub function. Okay, so our pub function, a pub async function, always errors. Um, we're not gonna take anything in. Now in this case, I feel a little bit more comfortable doing a return value on this. We're not gonna return a, um, a res um, just a, like a string or something like that. We're gonna return a result. So this is a standard normal uh, Rust result. Um, we can return a string if it's okay, but in this case, um, this never returns anything because we're, we're not going to. So I'm just gonna return nothing like that. And our error is going to be a status code. So this is from Axum HTTP status code. So it's an enum that has basically the, you know, HTTP status codes. Uh, let's, um, let's first start by just, we're training. Okay. That will be a 200, which means, um, we're not hitting that error that this always errors for. Okay. Let's head back to mod and we'll pull this in. So these always errors, always errors, and let's create a route for this that route. Path is always errors, and this is going to be a get always errors. If we head back to our new request and we hit send, great, we get that 200 okay, but well, that's not really an error, is it? So let's head back to always errors, and let's actually like let's change this. So instead of returning an okay, we're going to return an error. And we have to return a status code. Well, we already brought in status code. And here we have the text representation of all the possible uh, responses that we can get. Uh, now, if you go and you do a Google search for all the HTTP error codes or HTTP status codes you could possibly find, uh, there's generally three different ones. Well, technically there's four, but there's generally three different ones you're most likely going to use. So the 200 series from 200 through 299 are all, this is good, everything is okay. If we're on uh, the, the 300, which is that other one where it redirects, so it's okay, but like something's elsewhere, we use those a lot less often. And then we have the errors. So the 400 series, so 400 through 499, those are the client messed up. So it's not the server's problem, the client didn't send the right data, the client used the wrong route, the client did the wrong time, the client somehow has screwed something up and so therefore it's gonna be a 4XX error. And then there's the 5XX error, so 500 through 599, those are, the server screwed up. So if you have a database connected and your the database password doesn't work, so the server can't actually connect into the database, that's the server's problem. So it should send a 500 response back. And then there's a bunch of um, sub numbers. So it's not always going to be like 400 or 500. It might be like for you know 01 or 403. The 401 and 403s are authentication based, so like not authenticated or not authorized. Um, subtle differences there. 
There's one that's really fun because uh, a long time ago on an April Fool's uh, joke, somebody wrote a um, a request for um, a request for comment, which then got accepted and added to the specs uh, to add in an error if you're um, if you're a teapot. So let's go ahead and use this. So I'm a teapot is actually a valid error that you can use here. So we're going to say that this route is a teapot and therefore it can't do anything else. You should never use it. We're going to hit save, come back to our new request. And when we hit send, we get a status 418. I'm a teapot instead. Now, previously when we got an error, it crashed our server. So if we take a look at this again, we'll notice that nothing bad is happening. Everything is okay. We didn't get an error down here. We just got our 418 here. So it's really good to handle our errors properly and send them back because that way it won't crash the server causing you to need to restart it, which might uh, might not be might not be nice for anybody else who has any kind of like um, requests in flight. Anyways, this was how we create or at least return custom error codes in a case that something is going wrong. And uh, hopefully this is helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye.